So course one, the trust account here of the first Sales Management Mastery Academy course, and let's get right into it. Uh, something that we have discussed probably in, at length in many of the videos or maybe some of the emails that you've received from Sales Management Mastery over the course of the last few months or so is all about conventional wisdom, and it's really an important thing to think about because conventional wisdom is really what the enemy is here because if you think exactly the way that you always have thought and the way that everyone else thinks about managing salespeople, then top sales performance is really impossible to achieve. That the very first thing that you need to do is start thinking differently. And my aim in this course, as well as all the other courses, is to get you to think differently about how you manage and lead your salespeople so that you can unleash the best from them every single day. So conventional wisdom in all its shapes and forms really has it wrong when it comes to top sales management. And conventional wisdom dictates that a sales manager should treat all their sales executives exactly the same. Because conventional wisdom says you should be fair, you shouldn't play favorites. In fact, the golden rule, which is very, very helpful in many cases, but not when it comes to managing and leading salespeople, says that you should treat others the way that you would like to be treated. Now, this is great in theory, and I think in our personal lives, we can certainly carry this out and and certainly be this way and act in accordance with this rule. However, if you follow this as a sales manager, you will be led astray, unfortunately. So the golden rule says you follow this and you'll never go wrong, and that's what conventional wisdom is really all about. So these cliches that we hang on, um, you really need to sort of rethink them. <laughs> we talk about cliches in course two, uh, and uh, I'm chuckling on that because it just is just one of those things that you really have to think exactly how silly some of these corporate cliches are. But anyway, uh, the golden rule is treat others as you would like to be treated and in theory good, but in fact, it really is not effective in getting top sales results. So none of this really works in the sales management world is really my point. So if you treat others the same, or you treat others the way that you would like to be treated, it means that they're exactly like you. And if you really think about that, uh, that that's just a crazy concept. I mean, nobody's like you. We're all individual. So, uh, you know, I mean, you can't think this way. And I'm talking about what not to do here. And we'll tell you what to do in just a few moments. But, um, but that means they're exactly like you if you follow that wisdom and it's an incorrect. So furthermore, if you treat them all the same way, then this indicates your salespeople, they are all the same. So if you treat them all the same, then they're all the same. And you know that's not the truth because you know better than that. In fact, you just can't fall into that conventional wisdom trap because your sales reps are all completely different. So you shouldn't treat them the same. So this is what we discuss at length in the motivating and leading sections of uh, Sales Management Mastery Academy, but uh, it directly relates here to the trust account as well. So every sales rep of yours has a different set of motivations, fears, idiosyncrasies, talents, and drives. And if you uncover those hidden workings or these inner workings of your reps and then use those facts to guide your interactions with them, you're really uh, on your way to achieving a sales management mastery. I mean, without a doubt, that is a positive, positive first step in, in which to take. If so, if you can speak to them in the terms of what's important to them, talk about what is meaningful to them, then you'll be far ahead of the rest of the sales management crowd. So although the golden rule doesn't really apply when it comes to motivating and leading, it does apply when it comes to trusting. So here I am telling you something that is completely wrong when it comes to motivating and leading. But when it does come to trusting them, you like to be trusted. And you like others to trust you. So in that way, that sort of reciprocal type of trust is golden rule-like. So it does apply in this particular circumstance. So I'm directly contrasting what I'm going to be saying sort of in later courses, saying that this does hold to be true in this particular course in this concept. So, uh, But I'll get into that further here in just a second. So the one thing that's universal 
is trust. So you need to make daily attempts to get them to trust you. And this is your sales reps to trust you, of course. And once you get them start trusting you, you need to deepen that trust even further by doing even more for them and continually driving this point home is that you need to continuously make deposits in that trust account. And at every turn, every possible moment, you need to look for ways and almost seek out ways, constantly cognizant of ways in which you can strengthen your sales reps' trust in you. And you're not just doing this just to be a nice guy or a nice gal. There is a reason behind this. It's not just to be a good person. And um, although I'm sure you are, and I like to think of myself as the same, there is a sort of a method to this madness here. So once you do get that trust, you can start to optimally lead and motivate them. But you really can't do it a second early. And that's why we have this as course number one here is the trust account. So without the foundation of trust, you'll probably both be in the cellar, which is to mean that uh, you'll both probably be at the bottom of the sales management or the sales rankings. But this isn't conventional sales management thinking, as you may have guessed, which is good because you don't want to be conventional. See, most sales managers probably don't even think about this. But if all sales managers led their troops this way, it would be far more difficult for you to surpass them as their competition. Now, the competition can be, you know, the service or product that you compete against, or it could be, you know, those sales managers that uh, are in your company that you want to beat uh, almost more than you want to beat your competition. And uh, believe me, I know. When it comes to being a superior sales manager, though, sometimes it means doing things differently, sometimes doing things very unconventionally. And doing things unconventionally means that you're doing things that 99.9% .9 of all average sales managers just really don't do. And there's, fortunately, these sales managers are people that um, are the standard as opposed to uh, you being sort of the exception to that standard. So the average sales manager doesn't do any of this and never even thinks about it. So here's a newsflash for you. The average sales managers don't bother to trust at all, and that's really great for you. So to optimally lead your reps and unleash those explosive sales results that you really crave, you need to be on the same page as your salespeople. So you need to speak their language, and the only way that they'll listen is if they implicitly trust you. So it's very hard to lead people if they think that you're deceptive or they think that you're always sort of out for yourself. So they won't lead you if you, they know that you always have this ulterior motive, which is just not a good thing. So what you need to do is make regular deposits in the trust account. And that's what this course is all about. So how do you do it? Well, we're going to talk to you about a bunch of different ways here, almost uh, too many ways. Um, and it's there's so many different ways in which you can do it that you've almost got to start thinking about them almost separately and how you can apply them to individual circumstances when and after you listen or read or watch this course. How can I apply this tomorrow and start doing this tomorrow? Maybe you're doing some of them already, and if you are, then great. You know, that's, that's uh, totally awesome. But if you're not, then... Uh, you can certainly pick up a lot of these cues here, and really that's the first step towards unleashing the, the hidden potential of your sales rep. So make regular deposits in the trust account. So you might be familiar with some of this here, but uh, when you look at your bank account, uh, and you all have bank accounts. Obviously, I've, I have one. You have an ATM card, which is the automatic uh, I don't even know what the ATM stands for, but uh, it's that card that you go to the, to the ATM machine uh, and get out money. But anyway, you have a, a PIN number or a passcode that you access those accounts. But every week, you make regular deposits and withdrawals from that account. Basically, your base salary deposits go in regularly through the automatic deposit, while bonuses and commission checks go in periodically with expense checks and other deposits from your spouse, significant other, what have you. You make cash withdrawals, debit card purchases, write checks. You make other payments. Obviously, this is all pretty basic stuff. You've got a checking account. You've got a savings account, maybe probably just a checking account. You know how this whole thing works. So, But unless you enjoy bouncing checks and incurring those overdraft fees, which, trust me, 
Um, they really do hurt <laughs> when you do them. Uh, you're careful to monitor your balances so you don't bounce those checks and rack up those nasty overdraft fees. So even though you may have overdraft protection, you certainly don't want to pay 16.75 interest. So you're careful to make sure that those deposits outweigh your withdrawals. So think of the trust level that you have in your salespeople in the same way that you think about the balance in your bank account. Now, the amount of trust that you have, uh, or the amount of trust that they have in you, rather, is your beginning balance. Types of results that you are looking for as a top performing sales manager.